Imagine having all the wealth in the world, with billions of dollars to your name and pristine assets which announce the extent of your riches. Well, some people do not have to imagine because this is already their reality. And what better way to announce your wealth than to live on a secluded private island? Fisher Island, just three miles away from Miami, is a neighborhood known to be the preferred residence of the wealthiest and most prestigious families in America. In this video, we'll be talking about what makes Fisher Island so unique, its history, development, and exclusive features available only to the few hundred families that live on it. Be sure to watch till the end, as you don't want to miss the hefty cost of belonging to the prestigious Fisher Island Club. Fisher Island started from humble beginnings before it was developed into what it is today. In the 1800s to early 1900s, this island was nothing but a wedge of plush vegetation sitting in the Biscayne Bay. It was swarmed with coconut palms and mangroves and owned by a black man called Dana A. Dorsey. Dorsey at the time was one of the few rich black men in those days and a serial landowner. He was a wealthy banker who owned multiple properties throughout Miami, amassing a fortune as a millionaire. While deeply involved in real estate, Dorsey allocated some of his lands to provide housing for black individuals struggling to find accommodations. Among the properties he owned, the future site of Fisher Island remained in his possession for many years. This land remained undeveloped and neglected, with no efforts made to clear the overgrown vegetation or establish habitation. Instead, it stood as an unkempt, unoccupied parcel of land beside the ocean. However, this changed in 1905 when the city of Miami received permission from the American government to cut through the island known today as Miami Beach and create another island known as Government Cut. The use of this man-made island was to provide direct access from the Atlantic Ocean to the Miami seaport. The creation of Government Cut led to the separation between Dorsey's bare piece of land and the Atlantic Ocean. This barren land would later be developed into the elegant island known today as Fisher Island. The real history of Fisher Island begins when Carl Fisher enters the picture. Carl was on a mission to develop Miami Beach and its surrounding areas, and after seeing the potential of Dorsey Island, he decided to develop it as well. Fisher purchased the land from Dorsey through his company, Alton Beach Realty Co, and named it Harbor Terminal Island. He decided to develop real estate on this property, but first he quadrupled the area in land mass to accommodate the number of houses he planned to build. The development of Harbor Terminal Island had already begun within the next decade. Fisher made immense improvements, including erecting infrastructure, clearing the overgrown vegetation and building several residences. This improvement attracted investments from the richest people in society at the time, including the prestigious Vanderbilts. In 1925, William K. Vanderbilt II showed interest in the island Fisher was developing. He didn't just want to invest in the project, he wanted the whole island for himself. So the young Vanderbilt visited Miami that year and requested an audience with Carl Fisher to discuss the terms for acquiring the island. William was known for his interest in motor car racing and his exquisite collection of yachts, which Fisher coveted. Of all the yachts in William's collection, the real estate developer had his eyes on a certain 250-foot yacht, which was called the Eagle. So, as far as Fisher was concerned, this was the perfect opportunity to get the yacht he always wanted. To William's request to purchase the island, Fisher proposed, part of my island for your boat. And like that, the legendary trade was made. William let go of his luxury yacht in exchange for part ownership of the Harbour Terminal Island. Initially, Fisher sold just a few acres to William Vanderbilt. But as the 1920s unfolded, Vanderbilt managed to increase his land holdings to a total of 13 acres. With that, he began planning the construction of his vacation home, which still stands at the epicenter today. In 1929, Vanderbilt applied for and obtained the Miami-Dade building permit, and when that was done, 
He worked with renowned Swiss architect Maurice Fatio to build his dream Mediterranean-style mansion. The mansion, which cost $1.5 million to build, was originally built as a two-story L-shaped mansion. A timeless beauty through and through, it was built with a beautifully proportioned stone and stucco Mediterranean revival exterior, an octagonal entry, an extensive living room and a dated dining room furnished with antique oak and mahogany. It had just two rooms, one for Willie Kay, as he was popularly called, and the other for his wife, Rosamund. There were two cottages, the size of small houses which flanked the mansion. One of the cottages was Rosamund's painting studio, while the other was built for Rosemary, Rosamund's daughter from her previous marriage. Judging by the features of this mansion, it was built as a summer getaway and not an everyday residence. However, William used this mansion for only a few years until he passed away in 1944. After he died, Rosamond sold the mansion to Edward S. Moore of U.S. Steel. Several renovations have been made since the mansion's ownership changed and the island underwent many changes. More wealthy families bought and built properties on the island. However, from the 1970s, there wasn't any significant growth. Development was slowed down dramatically and it even stopped at some point. There weren't a significant number of residents. The only actively engaged project on the island was the Comparative Sedimentology Laboratory, which was built and managed by the Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, RESMAS, for the University of Miami. This laboratory was operated from 1972 to 1990 under the leadership of Dr. Robert Ginsberg. All other forms of development on Fisher Island remained stagnant until the 1980s, when a new leader dramatically changed the trajectory of the island's development. The 1980s marked a revolutionary era for the island. Following Carl Fisher's and William Vanderbilt's passing, the island was without a singular owner. After extensive legal battles, this land was ultimately made accessible to new investors. Subsequently, the island's redevelopment commenced, transforming it into an elegant neighborhood. Throughout this period, developers consistently adhered to the Spanish-style architectural design that had been popular on the island since its initial establishment in the 1920s. However, modifications which resonate with the change in times have been made over the years. For example, the former Vanderbilt mansion has been renovated over an extended period and now includes a ballroom, kitchen, restaurant and lounge. The historic mansion was recently restored to its original glory as part of a $60 million island-wide restoration project overseen by Hirsch Bedner Associates, HBA, the biggest interior design firm in the world. Today, Fisher Island is nothing like what Carl Fisher developed in the 1920s. It is even better. The 216-acre tropical paradise has morphed into a community with more than 700 villa-like condos. It also consists of a handful of freestanding homes, a nine-hole golf course, 18 tennis courts, two deep-water marinas, a beach resort, a post office private to the island, a firehouse, an astronomical observatory, and a spa. It also consists of a hotel, several restaurants, an upscale food and wine market, and a day school that teaches Mandarin to island residence kids. All these amenities are readily available to the 600 to 800 residents of the island. According to a 2020 census, there are barely 200 families on the island, so it isn't a heavily populated neighborhood. In fact, only 30% of its residents live on it all year round. Specific laws exist to ensure resident safety on the island. For instance, stringent security measures permit access only to residents and specially invited individuals. Moreover, the neighborhood enforces a strict speed limit, prohibiting the use of fast cars. Instead, residents typically navigate the island using luxurious golf carts. Despite its close proximity to the mainland, reaching Fisher Island is exclusive, with access available solely via private yacht helicopter or ferry services. The latter is restricted to residents and invited guests. Over the years, Fisher Island has been inhabited by several notable families, celebrities, business tycoons and politicians. Some of them include Oprah Winfrey, Mel Brooks, Julia Roberts, Andre Agassi, Boris and Barbara Becker. 
These are all A-list celebrities from different walks of life who value their privacy. This was the same reason William Vanderbilt chose this island several decades ago, and it is still a quality the island offers to date. Today, Fisher Island is the neighborhood with the richest zip code in the US. Residents have an average annual income of $2.2 million. And as you can expect, it is not cheap to live on this island. Average rent costs about $3 million, and to become a prestigious Fisher Island Club member, residents must pay a hefty fee of $250,000 initially and $22,256 in subsequent years. This fee grants them unlimited access to the amenities on the island, such as the private beaches, the park and lush gardens, the 18 tennis courts and other amenities we've already discussed. The development of Fisher Island is still underway. There are still lands to sell and develop and new architectural designs to incorporate. If you think Fisher Island is at the pinnacle of luxury in the modern world, think again. Chances are many more jaw-dropping changes will occur in the next couple of decades. But that's a curiosity only time can satisfy. What are your thoughts on the history and exclusivity of this luxury island? Would you live here if you could afford it? Let us know what you think in the comments. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more videos on old money lovers. Till next time, cheerio.